Yeah, so that's why you have to do, so in the array, I just store the min cuts from, so if I'm looking at index k, I keep building it this way. So at index k, I know for all other indices less than k, what is the min cuts? And I check to see if this is a palindrome. This is a palindrome, then I just get, then I just have the sum, the min cuts on the left side. Right. Like how many here like just don't get it? I didn't get the right part of it again. Yeah, it's very simple. So I have the string, right? Let's say A, X, A, B, C, D, M, F, G, H, L. Right? So for each index in this array, okay, this is a very bad example. There's not a single palindrome in there except for here. <laughs> Sorry. So just some example. So for each index in this array, it's an integer array, right? So I store the minimum number of cuts needed. So if I store some value here, that is the minimum number of cuts needed to partition the substring starting at zero to that index to break it into palindromic parts. So now if I want to fill out this guy, all I need to do is, yeah, I need to do O of how N, N for each. So it'll be, N, yeah, so it's two O N squared computations, yeah. 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 But it'll be overall O of N squared still. Yeah. So for each new guy that I'm supposed to fill out, I try to see if this is a palindrome, this is a palindrome, this is a palindrome. No, you said the and reverse, right? No, no, no. The other, oh, okay, for that length. Yeah. Okay. So right now I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking to calculate the number of palindromic cuts needed for the substance starting a day. I always start a day. Mm -hmm. Ending here, ending at this index. Okay. Yeah, so I check to see if CD is a palindrome. If CD is a palindrome, then it will be 1 plus whatever value is here. Right? If BCD is a palindrome, it will be 1 plus whatever values here. Mm -hmm. So I basically get the minimum That's of these values. The range of k, right? i plus 1, k. Range of k, what Range of k, what do you mean? I mean, for each a, for each a to b, yeah. it is i and j. Yeah. So for which we need to have cuts uh, from in all the positions at c, right? And then take the number. No, so. I, I take the minimum of all these values up yes. to this point because this is the palindrome that I'm considering and this is the the min cuts that I get from the other. Yeah, I'll just write the recursion. So here, so like f of k, where k could be somewhere from i to j, will be if is pal of. Um, so I'm currently looking at k. Zero to i minus k. Yeah, I need a loop. Zero hang on. K, hang on, hang on. I need a loop. So, so for i equals zero to, and this is string length, right? So k i less k than. K equals zero to k equals to i to j, right? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna write code for this. Can can we directly jump to write writing code? Okay, fine. <laughs> so this is a for loop. So I'm, I'm trying to fill out this array, right? And I have this matrix that tells me given to indices is the substring of algorithm, mm -hmm. right? So for that, so f or whatever, a of i, let this array be i, is, yeah, 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 you need another, you need another for loop. That's why I want to type it. It's cumbersome to write it. Let's, I'll, I'll explain when I'm typing, okay? Okay, it's 426. Can you guys look at the code, please? <laughs> Can I show you the code? I, I just want you guys to take away as much material as you can. So if I write code, I feel the learning will be less than if I were to do other, the, the problems on the next slide. So, so this is what you need to do to compute, to know whether uh, a certain substring is a palindrome, right? So, so that's very simple, right? So if you want to know whether a certain substring going from i to j is a palindrome, there's two things. One is the character at i and j should be the same. And yeah, i plus 1 to j should also be a palindrome, right? So that's what I do here. 
uh hang on yeah 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 so if they are the same then it's <laughs> yeah it's the same as this guy right if this guy is true this is a boolean matrix yeah if this guy is true then it's true if they're not the same then it will be false right and again i go diagonal by diagonal so by the time i get to a certain substring i know if the substring that's lesser than it in length is a palindrome or not Okay, now coming to min cuts. So I have this array, and I initialize this value to be the string length itself. So it's like cutting each Yeah. So now I go from zero to i. So that means, okay, so j is where it's starting, and i is where it's ending. Okay? So if I wanna know if the minimum cuts required at i, then for every j, I need to know uh, <laughs> well, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm just trying to make sense of this. So, all right, yeah. So if i, I to j is a palindrome, then I'm doing another check. Is J zero? Where J J is where it starts. And if it is zero, then it's minus one. <laughs> so that you get the minimum when you do J minus one. I think that's why you make J equal to four. If J is zero, then you put it as minus one. So that when you do plant dot min, okay. you can get the minimum. But I or if J is suppose one, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, plant dot min goes only for false thing. Yeah, there's no math dot min here, by the way. Oh, okay, it's here. It goes like j equal to zero, right? Yeah. So what what what's special about j equals zero? Hang on, hang on. So if, let's say it's true, and this is also true. Then I'm looking at a certain i and a certain j. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I get it. So yeah, if j, so this min cut will be minus one, so that here, it'll be zero. So zero cuts needed. If the whole string is a palindrome, then zero cuts are needed, right? Oh. So if j is, is for j equals zero means I'm, I'm starting from the very beginning, and at that, up to that point, if it's actually a palindrome, then I should store zero for that value, right? <laughs> yeah. And if j is not zero, then I need to get two things. One is min cuts of this guy, min cuts of j minus one, and then plus one, you, which is what I do here. Diagonal, like diagonal, yeah, so this is diagonal by diagonal, and this is, there's only a 1D array. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Oh, only if it is a Yeah. Because uh, start index minus, you, you get it by start index minus one, so. Okay, so if there is. I have this array, right? So min cuts of start index minus, minus one, one is just telling me the min cuts of, how many minimum cuts are required for the substring starting at zero up to j. Yeah. So at that point, you just have to add one. Mm -hmm. Okay? But, but I have. If it is not a palindrome, then. Yeah, if it is not a palindrome, then the minimum cuts required should be the same as the subject. No, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, if it is not a palindrome, then it will be many cuts. Yeah, if it's not a palindrome, then eventually I will get to a point where one of these is a palindrome, right? And at that point, I will execute this part of the script. So it will turn out to be something that's not being cut. OK, it's kind of a little confusing. Uh, so you guys probably should, I, I feel like we have to rewrite this code to understand this fully. Do, do you want me to rewrite this code, or do you want to do other problems? I want to do other problems. 
see that ultimately like, the point of this class is to like make you guys see the fun and solve the problem. For me, that is the objective. So uh, I want you to like, like be uh, being like exposed to more, rather be exposed to more problems than just know how to solve one. This this like it's, it's like two if else statements. So there is one if else. And within that if, there is another if else. Within that else, there is another if else. So I kind of like squash all of that into this one line. So that's why it's, it looks very ugly. And it's doing a lot. So then there is a stop link. And then I get Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's still mid cut because at that point, it's one plus whatever minimum value it got. It will be the same, right? So there's this loop, right? Yeah. And min cut is. What is J actually representing? I still don't get it. So J is the start of the substring, and I is the end of the substring. And I represents the length. Like you're no, I is the end How of the end 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 The way you explain it seems like you are taking the left part of it in the right part here, yeah. it doesn't look like that. Uh, it is within the range, within uh, j to i. Yes, uh, and 0 to j a. minus 1. So okay. here I'm looking at two parts of the string, right? So there is the start of the string, and then there is the start of the substring I'm considering, which is j, and then i is where it's ending. Okay, so there's two parts. So basically I need to know if this part is a palindrome, what is the min cut for this? If this part is a polynomial, what is the min cut? So I take the minimum min cuts. Right? Otherwise, I just retain that one that same min cut. But what are you otherwise I retain that same min cut and then finally I make this one plus that min cut. Now I see it. I just make I, I don't change min cut, that's why it's being equal to min cut. If this is true and this is true, then it has to be minus one because then I would make min cuts of i, 1 plus minus 1, which is 0. Right? If, if this is not true, that's where the actual computation is. If, if it's not j equals 0, that means I'm looking at some substring. And I need to take the min cuts, which is minimum, where the rest of the string is a bound. So when I go through the loop, I end up taking the minimum. Yeah, it's the, the problem is simple. The way I code it is like not so great, but uh, yeah. So go ahead and like revisit this problem to yourself. <laughs> okay, uh, doing really poorly on time. Okay, I have one more. Actually, I had more problems, but I was pretty sure we would run out of time. I have one more problem on the next slide. Uh, I'm wondering what I should do. So do you want to do two like medium to hard level problems or one extremely hard problem? Just more interesting medium to hard. Maybe. Okay, so that's so the, the more interesting one is the one on the next slide. <laughs> like why do you think it's interesting? It's very interesting because of the data structure we use for DP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should take a look at that. And what about these two? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, but these are also important because I yeah, I, I got it for Zillow and Facebook, the same Maybe question. Okay, or if I will do first that, then we can come back to this. Yeah. yeah but uh, there won't be enough time, that's for sure. Maybe next class. <laughs> next class, man, like, what, what do you want me to do in the next class? Uh, we have part two, right? No, no, we do. So do you want to do this problem in the next class or the next one in the next class? How much time do you Okay, let's look at word break. Actually, I know Yeah, yeah, everybody knows word break. Okay, let's do coin change. That's no, we go to the next one then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, okay, I'll just define this problem. So, they give you a sentence without space. So, it's like, my name is Karthik. Okay? And they give you... Yeah. No, whether it's a sentence or not. Okay, is there anybody that does not know what is word break? Okay, sorry, but you guys are outnumbered. So. But, but while writing code, how yeah. do you make that the dictionary thing is a constant stuff? 
It's already given. Why, why should it be a constant? I mean, we need to, at each point of time, we need to see to that point whether it forms a word or not. Yeah, so the dictionary is a set, so I just do if this word is contained in that set or not. This word, how do you define a dictionary? Into it's a set of strings. It's input. It, they also give you. Yeah, they also give you the. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, 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 so for sure. Yeah. If you have a dictionary, you need to know whether it's a word or not. Okay, so that, yeah. that will be. Or else it's very simple. Go buy a Webster's dictionary and then fill out. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Coin change, we have so many varieties of Yeah. It's similar no, to Knapsack. So, coin change, yes, yeah, it's kind of similar to Knapsack, but you don't have to do memoization. Yeah. So, coin change, uh, there are variations where you have to do backtracking, but there are variations where you have to do DP. So, I thought that was interesting, but yeah, let's take a look at the next problem. That's very awesome. <laughs> okay. So, your head will spin like once you read this problem, but don't be surprised. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain what it is, okay? So they give you a string, and I can make many trees from the string, and one of the trees is I just choose to break it at this point. I can choose to break it at this point or this point. But for now, I just break it at GR. So GR is the left tree, and E18 is the right tree, okay? And here, I have no option, so I have to break it here. Or I, I, I choose not to break it at all. I can do that as well. No, 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 I have to break it, my bad, yeah. So I break it all the way until like individual letters. So here, it'll be GR, and here, the left tree will be E. Here the right tree will be A T. And I can break this into A and T. Yeah. Okay? Now scrambling is in I take this tree and I can choose any number of nodes. And at each node I just flip the values. So I chose GR, so I just flipped GR. Okay? No, I, I left E A T as is. Okay? But later I can again go and choose E A T then it will flip, E becomes the right child, and AT becomes the left child, and I again flip AT, so it becomes TA. So once you flip the node, all the subtitles get flipped. Yeah, so basically the subtitles get flipped. No, 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 not, this, not all the children, just the nodes themselves get flipped. And then beyond that, I can again choose, I can pick between children, which child I want to pick. Okay? And finally, I have like a new string now, RGTA. So given grade and RGTA, I need to figure out if one is the scramble of the other. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure they won't ask this. But like, I, I took like a whole like 45 minutes or like a whole hour to like figure out how to do it. But it was I, I enjoyed it a lot, so that's why I put it in there. So you get it right. So let's let's have like let's go through an example really quickly. It can be any number of swaps. No, so finally what is, is after any number of swaps, you have two strings. Mm -hmm. You need to compare them and tell me if one is the, a scramble of the other or not. Yeah, so the, if you can come up with all scrambles of S1. Yeah, and S2. Yeah, but how would you come up with all scrambles of S1? I get it like... Okay, let's just do... No. Yeah, they are definitely anagrams because it will be made of the same letters. Yeah, then why, like, why do you have... But not every anagram is a scramble. So, okay, okay. So, let's, let's, let's do this example again. Great, right? Scramble is just flip by Yeah, scramble means... So, first of all, I take a string and I can make multiple trees, right? So, one tree is just this. Okay? And this tree, I can make GR and E. And this tree is this. Okay, this is one tree. Another tree is what they had in the example. Okay? Now I take this tree. This is still great. Yeah. Okay? Now I take this tree. And you guys pick any nodes. So I, I can pick this node, this node, and then this node. Okay, if I pick this top node, 
then its scramble will be this its scramble will be yeah it will be ATGRE correct okay but but then here if, if I scramble choose to scramble again here then it will be A and this will be GR and I can leave this as is so now it's A T E G R. So I scrambled some nodes. It's random. You can choose any setup. You can choose any node. So okay, let's let's look, read the problem again. To scramble the string, we may choose any non-leaf node and swap its two children. For example, if we choose the node G R, we swap two of its children that produces a scramble string rgeat eat okay he, he kept everything in grade the same but he just picked gr okay gr become rg okay so rgeat is a scramble of grade okay now he took this guy rgeat similarly if we continue to swap the children of the nodes eat and at so if you scramble EAT, then AT will go to the left, E will go to the right. But you have TA on the left because they also scrambled AT. <laughs> so now you have RGTAE. So that is also a scramble. So can you see it's conceivable that not all anagrams are scrambles? No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, 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 hang on, hang on. So, no, how, how is T, T, G, R, E, A, and a, a, a scramble? Tell me that. Oh, yeah, this is, this, this is possible because if you do G, R, E, A, T, and you do T here, okay, this is still possible, but let's. I mean, anagram is basically any word can be found to give it a word. Correct, but scrambling is not the same, that's what I'm saying. Scrambling involves like creating a tree and then swapping the nodes of that tree. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do E T G R A. Tell me that. Okay, one sec. G R E A T. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you see, you can't get this. So the final question is, after scrambling, you just go through the leaves, right? So you get an order, right? A, T, E, G, R. Okay, now this is a scramble because I could get a scrambled tree and I got a final order. So this is a scrambling of grade. Okay, so given two strings, you need to tell whether one is a scramble or the other. Yeah. Yeah. If it is jumbled too much, then Yeah, yeah. So, like, I just managed to come up with one thing. That's not a scramble. So, given two strings, you have to tell me whether they are scrambled or not. How will you do it? <laughs> no, you don't use anything like this three here right, to solve the problem. Okay, we definitely don't have to about time to code the solution, but I can explain how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given enough time, like, you, you guys can come up with it. It's not too hard. Is there anything like you that you want think it's important for this? To you don't need to know anything outside. It's just concepts used for this problem. How do you, how do you go forward? Like, like, what is your first thought process for solving this problem? Yeah, I just wondered how, how you scan this thing. So the, by definition, scrambling is just you take two parts and then you put one here, one there, right? But do we, so do we get that? the first uh, breakup? That also we don't get. You get nothing. You get two strings first. Oh. Then even breaking is our choice. Yeah, it could be. So they could have chosen some random nodes to or scramble. Or should we do all possible combinations all of All possible combinations. Yeah, you just have to tell me if one is a scramble or the other. Of the other. So basically you yeah. take one. We take F1 and do all have a problem. You kind of swap and then you arrive at the other right? So brute force way is... Is what she described, right? Get all possible scrambles. So how many scrambles are there for each? In factorial. Yeah. 
No, in fact, it is like all the combinations. I mean, you you can arrange all the characters among themselves. Got. Yeah, so is, is that easy to code coming no. up like coming up with all possible samples? It's not easy to code at all. I don't know how to do it. But I'm just, just saying for, for even the first step, do we need to have all possible trees that can be formed with this word? Yeah. So you you so a scramble can be from any of those trees. Yeah, so we yeah. need to have all possible trees at least for that word to start off with. You do, if you try hard method, yes. Oh. So hard method is so just is go, somehow they will figure out all the scams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is an easy way. Yeah. Choosing all the scams. Yeah, of course. Again, it's dynamic program. So ask yourself, what is the sub problem? What is the sub problem? Uh, the leads going. They want to play. By the way. Obviously, they want to play for this one. Awesome. Great. So the first step, so there's S1 and S2. So forming that. Yeah. So it's G R E A T and let's do A T E G R. Right? So there would have been some scramble. Okay, the, the tree could have been anything, right? The tree could have been 4, 1, or 3, 2, 2, 3. Yes. Any of those things. Okay? So I consider all where all it could have like been broken as a tree. So they could have broken it here, 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 here. Okay, where did I write code? Yeah. They could have broken it here, 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 here. Okay? Let's say I broke it here. Then if I broke it here, then what is true of these two parts? If you broke it what? Let's say the original tree to go from here to here, they took they broke it here. So they made the left child as GN, GR, and the right child as GAT. Then what is true of these two parts and those similar two parts of the nodes are stabbed. The initial load it will be stabbed basically at that position. Yeah. Maybe. So if, if they broke it here, then that means this and, and this yeah. is a scramble. And this is a, this is a scramble. Right? Or they may not have broken it there. Uh, they, they would have broken it there, but they would have scrambled it there. Yeah. If they did not scramble it there, then I take first two, first two. So there's four comparisons. I, I break it in different positions, and for each of those positions, I take the first half and second half, right? Yeah. And I check to see if the first half is a scramble of the same length on the second half. Okay? So let's say I broke it here. Let's say I broke it here. Hang on, I'll tell you. So now I, all I need to do is, are these two scrambles? Are these two scrambles? If they are, then the whole string is a scramble of each, each other. Right? But that's not sufficient. That's only necessary. So then the other thing I need to do is, are these two scrambles? Are these two scrambles? Yeah, because there's two things. You break into a tree, and there is one one thing is where you cut, and the other thing is did they scramble at that point? We have to cut both the like the given string and the what one compare with both of them. Cut yeah, them. yeah. So basically, ultimately, what you have to do is tell me whether these two strings are scrambled of each other. So now the sub problem is are certain substring scrambles of each other. So I need to identify which substrings have to be scrambles of each other for the total string to be a scramble of each other. So the substrings will be a scramble of each other if these two are a scramble and these two are a scramble. Or, same again, here I'm considering the same part, but I'm considering the last three, and here I'm considering the first two. Okay? So basically for ij, I need to know for all substrings of, of a lesser length, whether the, the starting guy is scrambled or the ending guy is scrambled. So what is a good data structure to tell me that? <laughs> so okay. So basically I have like to know that I'm cutting here, I only need one index, right? You look like a uh, only need this here. No, but uh, but but yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's four fifty two. So I'll, I'll try to wind up very quickly. So yeah, basically 
And, and for this, I again break this into some problem. So I need two indices, right? <laughs> so, so, okay, fine. So, finally, F. I need to know 0 comma L1. 0 comma L1. That means this is L1. This is 0. Okay. That, yeah, that, that, so this function is taking the first string from 0 to L1 and second string from 0 to L1 and telling me whether it's the whole thing is a scramble. Right? So this is nothing but f of. So I have a loop where i goes from 0 to L1. So this is a for loop. And inside this for loop, I have f from 0 to i on the first string. And I have 0 to i on the second string. If this is true, and f of i plus 1 to L1, comma i plus 1 to L1. Okay, either this should be true, or ah, we have reached the end of the page. Okay. No, it's kind of it's paint. So it's this or f of zero comma i, but this time I start at l one, and this will be i minus l one or l one minus i. That I got those many characters from the back. So L1 minus I and F of I plus 1 comma L and 0 comma L1 minus I plus I minus 1. <laughs> you get this, right? It's, it's that diagonal comparison or it's straightforward. Right? So basically, you need a data structure that takes four numbers and then maps it to a million. So you need a 4 D array. Actually, some people solve it with a 1D array, but I, I need to review that solution. Um, but, um, yeah, let's, let's quickly take a look at the solution. I will, if, if, if needed, I can like share my password and you guys can just, or change my password and share it. So, you guys can look at my solution. But, and again, I go diagonal by diagonal because by the time I want to look at IJ, I needed to have the answer for all substrings of lesser length. So I, I solved it in a different account in the past, and I just copy pasted the answer. <laughs> so, yeah, 40. <laughs> and so this is the base case. And yeah. So I have like two conditions anded, or two other conditions ended. That's it. It's actually like very simple to code and argue about. We just don't have enough time, that's why. 